All right, now this video is going to help you decide whether you should consider buying an iPhone or not. Of course, if you're an Android user. In this video, I'm going to talk about all the good and the bad things about iPhone. Here, I've got the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is the latest phone from Apple. And all those good things and bad things I'm going to talk about will be mostly concerned with this particular device and it will be applicable for most other iPhones as well. Now, let's first start with the bad things about this phone. The first thing you're going to notice when you hold this phone is this is heavy and bulky. Usually the pro versions of the iPhones are heavier and bulkier and it is a bit uncomfortable to hold it. Though this iPhone 14 Pro Max packs a battery size of around 43 to 4400 mAh, the phone is very bulky and heavier to use. You definitely need two hands most of the times. Now if you look at some of the phones in Android, especially the S22 Ultra, though it's a big device, it is a bit easier to handle compared to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now let me not compare this with the Galaxy or the other Androids because there will be a dedicated video coming up on the S22 Ultra versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max so stay tuned for that video. Now let's move to the second bad thing about the iPhone. They come with a proprietary lightning cable and you will have to carry the lightning cable wherever you go around. In some of the countries it is very difficult to find a lightning cable because most people use Android and by any chance if you forget your cable at home and go to a hotel or go to any other place you might have to ask many people to borrow a lightning cable. And another thing to notice, these lightning cables can transfer up to about 480 to 500 Mbps of data, which is same as the older version of the USBs, which is USB 2.0. So a slower data transfer speed is not a thing in 2022. All right, now let's move on. The next one is charging speeds. Right now we are living in a world of mobile phones where the charging speeds go up to about 120 watts or perhaps more. This phone here, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, still takes close to about two hours to fully charge, even if you're using a 20 5 watt power adapter and the worst part is once the charge reaches 95 percent it is going to take forever to get that last five percent juice into the battery you won't believe it took almost about 15 to 20 minutes to just charge the last five percent battery that is really annoying all right now let's move to the next one it is very cumbersome to copy and paste the data between a Windows PC and the iPhone. Sometimes copying from iPhone to the Windows PC was possible whenever I tried, but copying and pasting from Windows laptop or a Windows system into the iPhone is impossible. It doesn't allow you to copy and paste the contents. You will have to use iTunes, which is again the worst thing to happen in this world. You will take forever to understand iTunes and start transferring data on it. That is certainly a mess here. All right, now let me talk about a few software issues here. This phone here does not offer for an intuitive back gesture. Getting back from an application to the previous page is a pain except for the system applications or the Safari browser. On most applications, you will have to go to home and again open the application to go back. In some cases, we can swipe from the left edge of the screen to get back to the previous page. However, in most cases, it is really irritating to go back using the gesture. That makes it difficult to use this phone in one hand. Whenever you want to go back, the back arrow sits on the top left corner, so you will have to use two hands to go back by tapping on that arrow. That is the most annoying thing which I've been facing since I've started using this phone. And the next issue is with the recents menu. If you want to close all the applications in the background, you cannot do it by just a tap. You will have to close each app by swiping it up Whereas on Android phones, we do get close all option, which is not here on the iPhone. That is really strange. I'm not sure why Apple is not able to implement that simple basic feature to close all the applications at one go. The next major issue with this phone is lack of customization options, including the home screen launchers. Now here I would like to just give a few examples about the Android phones where we can customize most of the things on the phone. We can customize the launcher. We'll be able to install the third party home screen launchers. On Samsung Galaxy phones, we've got tons of customization options. We've got GoodLock, which enables us to customize most part of the operating system. We can play around with these customization options on Android phone, which is not available on the iPhone. The latest customization feature we have got is the lock screen customization on iOS 16, which is cool, but this is not really good enough. If you're a basic user, you would still be happy with this phone. But if you're into customization, this phone does not allow you to do that. All right, the next one is, it does not offer fingerprint unlock. Though the face ID is really good, a fingerprint unlock would have been really nice. Next one is no multitasking features. We do not have split screen options like we get on Android. Multitasking is definitely a pain on this phone. 
Next, this phone does not allow side loading of applications like Android phones. Whatever you get on the Apple's App Store, you will have to download and install them. And in most cases, most applications are paid. That's another thing to note here. The last bad thing I want to talk about is using maps on Apple CarPlay. The maps is not as good as Google Maps. And by default, we will have to use Apple's own maps application on Apple CarPlay. And unfortunately, if you want to talk to Google, you can't do that. While driving, Siri is the only virtual assistant you can access. These are some of the bad things which I have been experiencing on this particular device here. Now I'm sure if you have been using this phone, you will have a lot to talk about. You might have some of the bad things which you have experienced, which I have not listed out in this video. You can drop them in the comment section. Now it's time to talk about good things about this phone. But before we go ahead, if you are someone who want to know your phone better, then be sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you're finding this video interesting and useful, smash that like button as well. I would really appreciate that. Now let's go ahead. The first good thing I want to talk about is the battery life on this phone. I'm specifically talking about the iPhone 14 Pro Max. On this device, I'm able to get more than eight to nine hours of screen on time with more than one and a half days of usage. I'm talking about basic usage here, a few minutes of camera, a few minutes of gaming, a couple of hours of calling, social media apps and all other casual apps. With this kind of usage, I get close to 9 hours of screen on time and more than one and a half days of battery life with a very less idle time battery consumption. The battery optimization is just amazing on this phone and I'm 100% sure you will not get that kind of an optimization on an Android device. Just imagine charging the phone in the morning to 100% and using it till the next day evening sounds really crazy, isn't it? All right, now let's move to the next good thing about this phone. The brightness level on this phone can go up to 2000 nits and you may think that this is not really required. Around 1500 to 1800 nits of brightness is good enough for under the sunlight weaving but believe me guys this 2000 nits of brightness will really improve the visibility under the sunlight. And you know what this does not get activated under the normal bright light conditions only when you go under the sunlight the maximum brightness will peak to 2000 nits which is noticeable. You will have to really closely observe it to see that change happening when you take your phone under the sunlight. All right, now the next thing is this phone does not heat up even when you play games or use camera for longer period of time. Of course, there will be slight increase in the temperature, but you don't feel that heat as you feel it on the Android phones. Even while you are using the maps in the car while you are connected to Apple CarPlay wirelessly, the phone does not heat up. Whereas on most other Android phones I've seen, the phone really heats up while playing games, while using camera or when you're connected on Android Auto. That's an important point. The next one is the cameras. The cameras are just brilliant on this device. I don't want to get into the technical specifications or I don't want to drag this video into talking about camera. I would just like to say that camera performance is just amazing. The all new cinematic mode is crazy and this phone takes some amazing pictures for sure. Next one is the iOS. Now iOS has evolved over a period of time and this is a much more advanced operating system now if you compare it with the iOS which was there on an iPhone about four or five years ago. The UI looks amazing, it looks more advanced, it looks more modern and comes with some amazing features as well. Now this lock screen customization which has been added on the iOS 16 is definitely cherry on the cake. Now the iPhone users are getting the taste of customization on the iPhones. And I'm sure Apple is going to improve this in coming days. The photo crop feature works like a charm. The dynamic island is crazy. I have made a dedicated video on dynamic island. If you want to know more about it, you can check out the link in the description. And we now have always on display on iPhones. What I'm trying to say is iOS is a very advanced operating system we have on an iPhone. Now, as far as this phone is concerned, we just have about six GB of RAM on this and the performance is just fantastic. You're not going to notice any lags or stutters, which we usually see on Android phones. The next good thing is the animations. Now believe me guys, the animations on this phone is buttery smooth and I've been using this phone for the last couple of weeks and I have never noticed a stutter or a lag in the animations which is just crazy. The transition effects are very very smooth and on this 120Hz display you're gonna love using this phone with these animations and I'm sure a lot of people love animations and if you're into that you're gonna love this phone. 
Okay, now the next good thing is the security of the device. This phone does come with a very strong security because the iOS is a closed system. It is not an open source software like the Androids. This is a closed system and Apple completely controls it. It doesn't release its source code to the application developers and even the phone owners. So it is not as vulnerable as the Android phones to the threats. Maybe I'll make a separate dedicated video on the security of this device in the future. So stay tuned for that. The next one is haptics. The haptics on this device is really great. I would say it is much better than any other Android phones out there. You get a very different feeling when you use this phone with the haptics feedback. All right, now the next most important thing is this phone does not hang while using. Now, like I said, I've been using this phone for the last couple of weeks and believe me guys, not even once I could see this phone hanging. I did not see any stutters. It is really fluid. Even when multiple applications are running in the background, this phone is really, really smooth. The last thing I want to talk about is bloatwares. There is no bloatwares whatsoever on this device and you will also not see Google or any other applications tracking your activities on the phone. It is not going to throw any kind of advertisements while you are browsing on any websites and it will also ask you to not allow the application to track your activities on the device. That's optional. In case if you want to let the application track your activities, you can let that happen or you can completely restrict the third party applications to track your activities. That is just brilliant. These are some of the good things about this phone. I've been using this phone as a primary device and I'm actually liking it. At the same time, there are these cons which are really bothering me, which I've already listed in the beginning of the video. So I'm not really sure how soon I'm gonna switch back to Android or whether I'm gonna continue using this phone for a while as a primary device. Maybe it's too early to switch back to Android. Let me just use this phone for some more time and get back to you with the final review of this device. I'm really missing those cool features and customization options on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. At the same time, I'm kind of enjoying this phone as well. Let me know what do you think about this? Have you just switched from an Android device to iPhone? What are your thoughts about it? Do let me know. And are you planning to buy an iPhone in the future? drop a comment. That's about it. That's all I want to share with you guys. If you really find this video useful, be sure you smash the like button and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. You guys take care and stay safe. My name is Salian signing off. Cheers. Bye-bye.